Hi YouTube, this is Lucy from kbeautyhobby.com and today's video is about skincare during pregnancy. Before we really get into it, I just wanted to show something really exciting quick because by the time I film my next video, I don't think I'll be wearing this anymore. And it's the Innisfree Gel Tip. I think they call it the Gel Design Nail Tip. And these are basically thin stickers of gel that are applied on the nails, trimmed off, and then you put your hands under a UV light just like you would with regular gel polish. And I then put an extra coat of clear gel on top to really seal in the tips. These are eight days old and they're lasting so well. I definitely want more and more colors and everything. And I just want to show that quick because it's so exciting. And like I said, by the time I film my next video, I don't think I'll have them on my hands. You might be wondering, um, but I am not pregnant. I have an almost six year old and an almost one year old. And life is definitely exciting enough for me with just those two. Both of their birthdays are going to be this month in March. In fact, my daughter's birthday party is today. So I'm filming this quick before we have to head out. And since the baby is just about one year old, my whole pregnancy routine is still pretty fresh in my mind. I also had an article I wrote in Russian while I was pregnant. So I was able to pull that up and reference everything. And the reason I'm making this video now is because it was requested by one of you. So hopefully more than one person finds it useful. A big fat disclaimer, of course, is I'm not a doctor. I am not a dermatologist, I am not a cosmetologist, I am definitely not a midwife. So take all of this at your own risk. This is just my experience and my opinions. Of course do your own research, of course talk to your healthcare provider if you're pregnant right now. First I'm going to talk about things that are pretty much universally advised to be avoided during pregnancy. Second I will talk about the things that I myself avoid on top of that list. And then I will give you an example of some of the things that I've used while I was pregnant. The number one thing that I think just about everybody agrees on that it should not be used during pregnancy is retinol. Retinol is a high concentration of vitamin A and that can cause birth defects. So if you have anything that has retinol in the ingredients, it is best saved for after pregnancy. Sometimes people also say that it should be avoided while nursing but I personally did not find any kind of scientific evidence for that. And to me, by the time you're nursing, the baby is already out of you. So birth defects should not be happening. And I think I personally would be okay using a retinol while nursing, but of course, do your own research. Number two are BHA acids. The main BHA acid is salicylic acid. Now this is where it gets sort of into a gray area. There is understandably not very much research on pregnant women because who would want to be testing things on pregnant women? So most of the research we have for that is for oral medications with salicylic acid that are definitely to be avoided. Now my midwife told me that anything I could get without prescription for topical use, like peeling gels or some kind of exfoliants, or any kind of acne products. Those are typically the type of products that contain BHA or salicylic acid. She told me that it is probably okay and that the things to be avoided would be more of a stronger solutions, the type that you would get at a dermatologist or a cosmetologist office. Now for me, I follow a rule of if something makes me nervous, I don't do it, especially when I'm pregnant. So I just skipped BHAs altogether. A special note on the willow bark extract. Salicylic acid, or one type of salicylic acid, is actually made from willow bark extract or from willow bark. And if taken orally, willow bark tablets get converted inside of us into salicylic acid. But this reaction does not happen if the willow bark containing product is used topically. So I had a couple things while I was pregnant that had willow bark in them. Usually it's toners like for oily skin because willow bark can control excess oil production. And I personally still chose to use them. I was okay with that. But again, it is completely up to you and always talk to your doctor. I think that will be a theme of this video is talk to your doctor. And hopefully your healthcare provider is well versed in skincare for pregnant people. 
The AHA acids are typically considered safe. Those are the acids that come from foods. So sometimes it is a mandelic acid or lactic acid, acids of that nature. I had a very mild AHA exfoliant that I occasionally used. I will show that in the last part of the video. So I was okay with that, but again, it's all up to you. Next thing to avoid is hydroquinone. It is a skin lightening agent and it is very common in like skin lightening, skin whitening creams. The information online is quite confusing and contradictory. Some sources say that it's okay to use, some sources say it's not. Based on what I've been reading, it seemed way too risky to me. Plus, I just didn't see the need really to introduce hydroquinone in my personal routine, so I skipped it. There are, in my opinion, safer things to use, like niacinamide, for example, if you have pigmentation issues. The next thing is kind of skincare related and kind of not. It is microcurrents. The reason that I put it in this list is because I have the new face device. It's a microtone, microcurrent facial toning device. You may have seen it. It is supposed to tone and tighten and reduce wrinkles. It is FDA cleared, which is not the same as FDA approved. So I was wondering if that was safe to use during pregnancy. And I, of course I found some YouTubers who were using them and some bloggers who were using them during pregnancy. And I couldn't find anything on the website of the manufacturer about it. So I ended up emailing them. And they replied to me saying, no, it is not safe because it's a microcurrent device and the FDA says that microcurrents are not safe during pregnancy. Whether or not that microcurrent could actually reach from your face to your belly and to your growing baby, that remains debatable, but it's one of those things that better safe than sorry, so I skipped it. On top of all of that, there's certain things that I personally avoid in my skincare on a regular basis and pregnancy is no exception. To save you some time and possible repetition, I do have a whole video about things that I avoid and why. So all of those still apply while I'm pregnant. I'll leave a link in the description box. And on top of that list, I also avoided an ingredient called sinaki, which is kind of a play on the word snake. And it's a synthetic peptide that is made to mimic almost like an effect of Botox. It is basically trying to relax the underlying muscles of the face, which will then smooth out wrinkles. And that is something that, of course, has not been tested on pregnant women or nursing women. And I thought it was a pretty new thing. Who knows what it really can do? And so I just skipped it because it made me nervous. Now let's talk about the things that I did use a lot of these products, of course, I don't have any more because my baby's almost one. Some of them I have in duplicates still, but a lot of them are gone. So I will put pictures somewhere in one of these corners of the things I'm talking about. And I will put links in the description box where you can get them. And then two reviews if I have full reviews on my blog, kbeautyhoppy.com. In the first part of pregnancy, I was very sick. I was throwing up every day, multiple times a day. It wasn't just morning sickness, it was an all day sickness. And so a lot of times I was just, I just couldn't be bothered to do a full morning routine. I, you know, it's just survival mode. So I used this product by Higgy and it is an all-in-one, I think they call it an all-in-one essence, but it's basically an all-in-one. You apply it to clean skin and it replaces everything from toner all the way to your SPF. So it's all the steps, toner, essence, emulsion, all of that. So you just only apply that and then directly go into SPF. And that was such a lifesaver for me because it still allowed my skin to look good and be well taken care of, but it was one step, it was super simple. And I will put, like I said, a link in the description box. But that is something that I ran out of since then. And I would definitely buy it again. It is a wonderful, wonderful product. If I remember right, it was a bit on the pricier side. But I thought it was well worth it for me. Just because it replaced all of those steps. And it was very high quality. For cleansing, I used my favorite Huang Jisoo cleansing oil and a foaming cleanser. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen these things mentioned a few times because just recently I had some trial sizes of the oil. So they've been kind of featured in my empties videos. 
but at the time that I was pregnant, I had a full-size cleansing oil and a full-size foaming cleanser. And these are wonderful products, all natural, developed by a dermatologist to be suitable for sensitive skin and all skin types. And so it didn't bother my skin and my pregnant senses. I did definitely have a heightened sense of smell, so I avoided anything with crazy fragrance and of course additional dyes and things like that are just not necessary so i really try to be simplistic in my skincare in general but especially when pregnant for toner i mostly used the spray to toner by a company called Sikago, and it is made with centella asiatica and other soothing calming components it was a spray which sometimes felt good just to spritz my face and especially if it was cool like i said i just felt pretty sick for a, quite a big part of my pregnancy and it calmed down after I think maybe 14 or 15 weeks or so um, but I used that toner and it was really nice and soothing and calming and if I had any redness it would take care of that and that's another thing I'm already out of. I have very fair combination skin that is incredibly prone to freckles and things like pigmentation can really blossom during pregnancy. Some people really get melasma which is a discoloration of the face sometimes it's referred to as the mask of pregnancy i didn't get that but i still was trying to be proactive in my early pregnancy it was summer and that's when a lot of my freckles pop up so i used a manufactory niacinamide essence and it's one of my favorite niacinamide products ever it is just a clear essence it's unscented it comes in a glass jar I'll put a picture up here, but just know that their packaging has changed since then. It's not uncommon for K-beauty brands to revamp their packaging, but as far as I know, the ingredients and the product inside did not change, just the labeling and some of the design elements changed. It is a wonderful product. It helps kind of reduce the pore size, at least visually. It helps with pigmentation. I really loved it. I would buy it again in a heartbeat. In fact, talking about it right now makes me want to buy it again. For emulsion, I used the Etude House Sung Jung emulsion. It was um, just an unscented, very plain, but very nourishing emulsion that still was light and not heavy. It is made for people with sensitive skin. It is 10 free, so free of 10 potentially controversial ingredients which are typically the type of things that I avoid in my skincare, like parabens, for example. And it was a lovely emulsion. I didn't always use it in the morning because that Higi product, the all-in-one, pretty much replaced everything except sunscreen. But in the evenings, sometimes I would use that, especially in the summer. I didn't always need like a night cream or a sleeping pack. I would just use an emulsion. Sunscreen is important at any time, at any age, at any stage of life, but probably especially when you're pregnant because of that hormonal shift and the basically people becoming more prone to hyperpigmentation when pregnant. At the time, I used the Make Prem sunscreen and it's probably still my holy grail of sunscreens to be honest it is such a wonderful texture it's non-drying it's non-nano it's supposed to be reef safe although to be honest i am not very well versed in what that means exactly but okay great good for the reefs why not i don't have that anymore i have a couple others that i think would also work that i'll show you one of them is a favorite of mine it's a repeat purchase it is the etude house sunprise sunprise mild airy finish spf 50 it is an all mineral sunscreen made for combination to oily skin this particular one is olaf edition <laughs> but i've owned this i think three or four times by now it is very cost effective it is non-drying even though it has alcohol in the ingredients and if you're worried about alcohol i suggest that you watch an awesome video that lab muffin just put out about alcohols and skincare and what they do and how they're not really that bad um, not as bad as people say but for me this never causes any kind of dryness or any issues i love the finish of it it is matte but not drying so i think this would work just fine it's just at the time i had the make prem so that's what i was using and another thing that i'm currently trying i've been using this for a few weeks and i showed it in i think my morning skincare routine video that i posted a couple weeks ago but this is the thank you farmer safe sun fluid and that's another all mineral sunscreen i prefer all mineral sunscreens versus uh, chemical filter sunscreens and this is 
I don't think there's a scent at all, or if there is, it's very mild, and it has a nice finish, so either of those would work. I think this one is probably the most cost-effective as far as sunscreens go. At the time, I was also using this Urang Natural Essence with Rose, and even though it was called Essence, to me, texture-wise, it was more like a serum. It was a gel texture, and it came in this luxurious glass bottle, and it's all natural, and it just made my hippie tree hugger heart so happy. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful product, definitely on the pricier side, but I thought it was worth it, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. As far as supplemental non-everyday products, I did use a version of this Laneige sleeping pack. It is scented, but it's not overwhelming, and I actually like the scent. And it is pretty much a holy grail, I think, of K-Beauty. I feel like just about every blogger out there talked about it before. It is a gel texture. Very light, nice and hydrating, plumping, and just a pleasure to use. If you've never ever tried one, I think it's worth a try because it's such an iconic product. I mean, it's sold everywhere. You can even buy it at Target. It is so well known. And this one is the original version. There's also a lavender version that I've had in a little sample pack before. And the only difference really is the scent. And I think the lavender one is more purple in color. This one is more blue. So I use that occasionally. And then, uh, like I mentioned, the AHA product for occasional very, very gentle exfoliation. And it's this one. It is by Wish Trend Mandelic Acid. It is meant to be used after cleansing, kind of as a toner. Fair warning, it does sting a little bit. It is a 5% mandelic acid, which is a fairly low concentration, if I understand it correctly. And this, the little stinging is definitely not painful, and to me it's not unpleasant. However, I recently gave a friend a little sample of this, and she didn't like the stinging at all, and she said she wasn't going to finish her sample. And for a more traditional peeling, I use the Nature Republic Cranberry Peeling Gel, which is a very interesting product. It doesn't... it's called a peeling gel, but it doesn't peel like most peeling gels do, so it doesn't form these little pieces of cellulose when you use it, but it still exfoliated really well and it smelled really wonderful. And I was using it, I think, mostly throughout the winter time, like fall and winter when everything turns into pumpkin spice and cranberry in the United States. And so it, it really went well with that theme and I really enjoyed it. I'm out of that one as well. All of the products I mentioned, it's not like you have to use those. There's so many different options for everything. I just personally preferred things with very little to no fragrance, very little to no added colors, and just kind of what I would think of as plain vanilla things. Nothing too crazy, nothing too intense. I just tried to preserve the state of my skin. I wasn't really, I didn't have any aggressive goals of like making my skin better while pregnant. I just wanted it to not get worse. And those first about 12 weeks or so is pure survival mode. I mean, between nausea and bloating and pants not fitting anymore but you're still not wanting to announce the pregnancy and being tired all the time i mean i had enough on my plate so it was just survival mode at that point thank you very much for watching i hope this was useful to you if you're currently pregnant happy pregnancy i hope you're enjoying this time i know so many people will say enjoy it you'll miss it but I also want to take a moment to recognize that it's very difficult. It is a hard time, it is confusing, there are hormones, body changes, nausea, sleep problems, there's so many things that are challenging and the society might be telling you, oh enjoy this wonderful time and it might be hard for you. So I just want to take a moment to recognize that I see you and I hear you and I've been there just like being a mom to a small baby. People tell you to bottle it up, to enjoy every moment because it's so fleeting and yes it is and there's so many wonderful moments but there are also so many difficult moments there's sleep deprivation and feeling like you never have time to yourself and all these changes so you're not alone and if you want to chat reach out or leave me a comment you can find me on kbeautyhobby.com on facebook in korean beauty fanatics group on instagram at kbeautyhobbit I hope you're having a wonderful week. I will see you next Saturday. And until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much.